In this part, we'll compare the structure of glucose and fructose. Both are hexose sugars. We have seen the structure of glucose though, but we will quickly go over the structure again. So glucose, which is an aldose sugar, fructose, which is a keto sugar. It is, sorry, it is a ketose sugar. And this is an aldose sugar. So when we make the structure of glucose, what we made, we made two structures. One was open, two, three, four, five, six carbon. Here is aldehyde group, then OH, H, and on the third one, orientation is different. Then again, same. Here also it is same. And on the last one, it is OH and H and H. And we said when it makes a bond, the bond is formed between the first and the fifth carbon. After bond formation, the ring that we get is hexagonal ring where carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the sixth is extended. So bond which is formed between fifth and first carbon. This ring was called pyranose ring. Now ketone sugar that is fructose. Ketone group is never on terminal carbon. It is always on subterminal. So if we make six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and number them, then keto group is present always on subterminal. So keto group is present here. And other things are same. All valencies must be satisfied. So let us see. Here it is OH, H and H, all four valencies. This carbon has its valencies already satisfied. So it is OH here, H, OH here, H, OH, H and H. This is fructose. Let us count the number of carbons. Six carbons we have mentioned. This is also C6H12O6. C6H12O6 because both are hexo sugars. So, let us see how many oxygens we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 oxygens. 6 carbons are there. Hydrogens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So, 6 carbons, 12 hydrogens and 6 oxygens. But, the functional group is keto group here. In glucose, it is aldehyde group. In fructose, is keto group. Now, the bond, fructose can also exist as an open as well as a ring st structure. In this case, when the ring is formed, it is formed between the second and the fifth carbon. Now, if that is how the ring formation takes place, that is oxygen is going to come or it is shared between the second and the fifth carbon. Then, this is going to be carbon number 3, this is going to be carbon number 4 and 5. What is attached to carbon number 2 will be carbon number 1 and what is attached to carbon number 5 would be carbon number 6. So the bond is formed between these two. So when these two come closer to fifth, uh, an arm that is 6th carbon is attached and to 2 first carbon is attached. This ring is pentagonal ring. It is pentagonal ring. And how many carbons are present in this ring? Let us count. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So pentagonal ring is made up of 5, sorry, 5 carbon atoms and 1 oxygen atom. Such a ring is known as Purin, sorry, it is four carbons and one oxygen atom. Such a ring is known as furanos ring. So, a ring which is pentagonal is furanos. The ring which is hexagonal is pyranos. In pyranos also, there are carbons, but here the carbons are five carbon atoms and one oxygen atom whereas in case of furanose there are four carbon atoms in the ring and one oxygen. So fructose gives us a furanose ring 
and glucose gives us a pyranose or it forms a pyranose. Both these hexo sugars are reducing glucose and fructose both are reducing sugars. And why are they called reducing sugars? Because they can convert cuprous to cupric. Any, any reducing, uh, they can act as reducing, they can reduce any substance. And the reason for this, these sugars being reducing is having aldehyde or keto group. So if a sugar has functional aldehyde or keto group, then these sugars act as reducing sugars. So when we talk of hexo sugars, we take four examples glucose, fructose, galactose, mannose. But we have to study the structure of these two sugars in detail. Glucose is our main blood sugar. And this is the sugar which is actually the fuel for energy. Fructose is commonly termed as fruit sugar. This is fruit sugar. And Glucose and fructose are isomers of each other because the formula is same, only the arrangement and the functional groups are different. But the molecular formula is same. It is C6H12O6. So in case of hexose sugar, glucose, which is main blood uh, sugar, we can simply call it blood glucose, which exists in both the forms. It is an aldose sugar and both that is glucose and fructose. Either they have aldehyde or ketone, but both of them have many hydroxyl groups. And that is why they are called polyhydroxy. This is called aldose polyhydroxy sugar. This is keto polyhydroxy sugar. So this is how we compare. And the most important thing that we have to remember are these two rings and how these rings are formed. And during this bond formation, elimination of water molecule takes place. Now, if we have to talk about the other sugars, the next sugar we said we'll discuss in detail is pentose sugar. So next we will talk of pentose sugars. So after hexo sugars, now we would talk of pentose sugars. Now when we mean pentose, the formula is going to be C. Five, five carbon sugars and here the examples that we take off is of ribose sugar, deoxyribose, albinose. These are pentose sugars. Pentose sugars most important which we have to discuss are ribose and deoxyribose because these sugars are essential for formation of the nucleic acid. Ribose sugar is present in RNA and deoxyribose is present in DNA. So now what is the difference between these two sugars? These are five carbon sugars. So let me draw the structure. Carbon number one, two, three, four and five. That means here the bond is formed between first and the fourth carbon. But the ring that is formed is a pentagonal ring which has 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons and 1 oxygen. That means it is furanose ring. Now let us see which all functional groups are there. Normally we are mainly concerned about carbon number 2 and 3. Because as I said these sugars they are the constituting parts of DNA and RNA. So carbon number one is the position where nitrogen base is attached. And that is why we are not focused on this. We are not even focused on carbon number five because here phosphoric acid gets attached. When we come to the structure of nucleotides, we'll talk about the bonds and all. Only point that I'm referring to is these two carbons are the most important ones. In case of carbon number two, there is an OH group and H. At carbon number three, also there is H and OH. That means this ribose sugar has two functional groups. That is OH here 
and OH here. And this is, okay, let us talk about the second one and then we'll compare this. And here we are talking of deoxyribose sugar. It is also pentose sugar, so the structure is going to be the same. Let us make this carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Same thing. Here also there is going to be nitrogen base attached. At carbon number 5, it's going to be phosphoric acid attached. And now our carbon number 2 and 3. In case of deoxy, as the name tells us, deoxy, that means oxygen has been removed. So carbon number 2 has H and H, carbon number 3 has OH and H. Now we have both these structures in front of us. What is the difference? There is no difference at carbon number 1. There is a difference at carbon number 2. In case of ribose, there is OH functional group. Whereas in case of deoxyribose, OH has been removed or you can say it is replaced by H. Or in other words, one oxygen is less and that is why it is called deoxy. It is ribose sugar with one oxygen gone deoxyribose sugar. Ring and carbon number 3 has same. This ring is also furanose ring. So both pentose sugars, deoxy as well as ribose pentose sugars, they make furanose ring. Only one difference. In case of ribose, two functional groups, one at carbon number 2, one at carbon number 3. And in case of deoxyribose, only at carbon number 3. Now, because of these two functional groups, ribose sugar is more reactive. More the number of functional groups, more reactive the molecule is. Here, the number of functional groups is less. This is an important point why DNA is a genetic material and RNA is not. We want our genetic material to be stable. If this RNA was genetic material, it would have had ribose sugar. Ribose sugar is reactive. So RNA is stable, but compared to DNA, it is less stable or we can say it is more reactive. And the reason for that is two functional groups. DNA is stable because it has only one functional group. So that is this, this point also helps us understand the structure of DNA and why DNA is more stable as compared to RNA. So these are two important pentose sugars. Now in the next part we will take up disaccharides. We have talked of monosaccharides and as we said we will discuss two in detail. We have discussed hexose sugars and pentose sugars that is these two. In the next part, we will take up disaccharide. That means how two monosaccharides join to form a disaccharide and then oligosaccharide molecules.